What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be doing a complete walkthrough on how to use the most popular modes that my custom controllers have to offer. Now, I do want to say that there is going to be some timestamps down in the description below for each mode. So for the people who already own or plan on buying one of my controllers, you can always just go ahead and refer back to this video. Now, another thing that I do want to mention is that you guys are definitely going to want to stick to the end of the video because I'm going to have a big surprise for all of my loyal subscribers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go over the first mod. To start off, I'd like to show you how to easily remap your back buttons if you requested this option on one of your controllers. It's very simple to do and all you have to do is turn your controller over so you're looking right at the back of it and then hold down that remap button that is directly right in the center. Now you're going to want to hold this button down for around five seconds or until you see that red LED turn on in the window. Once that red LED turns on you are now in programming mode. We can now assign any of these back buttons to any of the face buttons. For example I'm going to do my back left button and set it to X. So all you want to do is go ahead and hold your back left button and hold X at the same time until you see the red LED flash. Now for the next one, I'm going to do R3 and then my right back button. So go ahead and do the same thing. Hold both at the exact same time and then you're going to see that red LED flash. Next, I'm going to do that third button on my left index finger with square. Same exact thing. You're just going to hold it down until you see that LED flash. And then my right index finger is going to be triangle. And now we have to save this configuration by holding down that remap button again. And you will know that it is saved once you see that red LED turn off after you're done holding it down. For this next part, I'm going to be showing you how to turn on and off your rapid fire, as well as how to change your rapid fire mode. So built into all of my controllers, there is essentially 10 pre-made rapid fire modes. These rapid fire modes have different rates of rapid fire speeds. So for specific weapons, a faster speed may work better, or another weapon may work better with a slower rate of speed. So it's good to test out all of your favorite weapons within a game, and then figure out which mode works best for that specific weapon. So to turn on rapid fire, it's very simple. All you have to do is simply double tap the left arrow. Once you double tap that left arrow, you'll notice that your LED microphone is going to start flashing green. And once it is flashing green, rapid fire is now activated. So here's a quick demo with the DMR with the rapid fire on. And then if you want to disable rapid fire, you have to repeat the same exact steps. You just want to double tap left. And then the green LED is going to stop blinking. As you can see here, it is very beneficial to having rapid fire, especially for a weapon like the DMR, because if you're pulling the R2 button over and over again, it does decrease your accuracy because you're constantly moving the controller. So when you have rapid fire activated, all you have to simply do is hold down R2 and you're going to be getting the fastest rate of fire. Now, if you get the controller and you feel rapid fire mode one is a little bit too slow for your specific weapon, it is very simple to be able to move up a level to rapid fire mode two. You just simply want to hold down the left arrow for around five seconds or until you see your microphone LED blink blue. Now, the amount of times that that blue LED blinks corresponds to the mode that you're in. So if that LED blinks two times, you are now in mode two. If it blinks three times, you are now in mode three. So as you'll see here, I am now in mode two because the blue LED blinked two times. Now I'm going to go ahead and move into mode three. So I'm going to essentially do the same exact thing. All you want to do is hold down that left arrow until you see the LED microphone blink. And as you'll notice, it just blinked three times. So now I'm in mode three. And another thing I would like to mention is as you move up higher in the rapid fire modes, you will notice that the green LED is going to start flashing more erratically. Now, as you heard me say before, all my controllers come pre-built with 10 rapid fire modes, all of them with different speeds. So you can keep continuing to go up the whole list all the way up to number 10. And then once you hit 10, it will reset and go back to number one. Now say if you're in rapid fire mode number four and you want to lower it down to rapid fire mode number three because the weapon isn't performing as you wish. All you have to do is hold down L1 and then hold down the left arrow for around three to four seconds and then you will see the blue LED flash again. Now just keep track of how many times that it flashes because that will correspond to what mode you're in. So as you can see here, I just went from mode four to mode two. Now the next popular mode is burst fire. So burst fire is going to send a quick three round burst on any single weapon that you have. So to activate burst fire, it is very simple. All you have to do is hold down left and then tap square. You will notice that the microphone LED is gonna stay solid green. All that means is that burst fire is now activated. So as you'll see here, if you pull down the trigger, your weapon is just going to fire three rounds. And then if you wanna turn off burst fire, you have to perform the same exact steps. You just simply hold down left and then tap square and then the LED is gonna turn off. Now this next mode is very fun with dual wielded weapons and it is called Akimbo Rapid Fire. And all it essentially does is turn L2 into rapid fire. To activate it, all you have to do is hold down the left arrow and then simply pull down L2. Once you do that, you will notice that the microphone LED is going to start flashing blue. That means Akimbo Rapid Fire is now activated. Now the beauty of the rapid fire mod chip that I installed in this controller is that you can turn on multiple modes at the same time. So for example, I now want to turn on rapid fire on my right gun. So all you simply want to do is turn on rapid fire by double tapping left 
left. And as you will notice, we now have two modes on at the same exact time. So if I pull down L2 and R2 at the same time, I now have rapid fire activated on both triggers. Now to add a little bit more fun to your dual wielded weapons, we can actually activate another mode. So say if you want to simply be able to pull down the R2 button and you want your L2 button to automatically shoot for you so you don't have to, we can do that. To do that, all you simply want to do is hold the up arrow and then pull the R2 trigger down. Once you do that, Mimic Auto Akimbo is now activated. So as you'll see here, all I have to do now is simply pull down R2 and both guns are going to start firing automatically in rapid fire mode. Now we can even take this configuration a step further by activating auto run mode. To activate auto run mode, hold the up arrow and then tap L3. Now you have the capability of just simply moving your left analog stick forward slightly and then your character is going to automatically start sprinting so you no longer have to push down on L3 to sprint. Since we have so many modes activated right now it could be slightly confusing on how to disable all of them. But there is a feature built into the controller that allows you to simply turn them all off at the same time. All you have to do is hold down L3 and R3 at the same time and then tap the left arrow. And then you'll notice the microphone LED is going to start flashing and all the modes are now deactivated. The next mode is called Drop Shot. So with Drop Shot as soon as you start firing your weapon Weapon, your character is going to automatically lay down on the ground. So to activate that, all you want to do is hold down the left arrow and then tap R3. Now in my case, the reason why it's R3 is because I have my controller set up in tactical mode. If you have it in the default mode with O, you can do the same exact thing. You just hold down the left arrow and then tap the O button. This can be very beneficial because it's going to move your character out of your enemy's line of fire. This next mode is called Jump Shot. To activate it, hold down the left arrow and then tap X. Now every time you pull your right trigger, your character is going to automatically start jumping, which will confuse your enemy. And to disable Jump Shot, you just want to do the same exact thing. Hold down left and then tap X. Next on the list, I'm going to show you quick scoping mode. To activate quick scoping mode, hold down the up arrow and then pull L2. You will see the microphone LED turn green and then turn off. This means quick scoping mode is now activated. Now, as soon as your character fully zooms in with a sniper rifle, the controller is going to automatically pull R2 for you, allowing you to fire your weapon faster than anyone else. One thing you need to know about quick scoping mode is that each sniper rifle reacts different with it. So I highly recommend that you pick your favorite sniper rifle and then program your controller to work with quick scoping mode. To program it, all we have to do is put the controller in record recording mode. To put it in recording mode, you want to hold the left arrow and the up arrow at the same exact time and then pull the L2 trigger. Once you do that, the microphone LED is going to start flashing really fast in the color orange. Now that you're in recording mode, you can now train your controller to work with your specific sniper rifle. To do that, hold the left arrow and L2 at the same exact time and as soon as your character zooms in, pull the R2 trigger. When you pull the R2 trigger, recording mode has now ended and now the controller is programmed to work with that specific sniper rifle. And now we have to save that setting. To save the setting, push down on L3 and then you will see the LED flash. Now when you activate quick scoping mode, your sniper rifle is going to perform perfectly. This next mode is called Steady Aim and it is mostly used for sniper rifles. To turn it on, hold down the left arrow and then tap L3. Once you do that, Steady Aim is now activated. So as soon as you zoom in with your sniper rifle, your character is going to automatically start holding their breath so that your sniper rifle doesn't sway and move around while you're trying to aim. Now here is what it looks like with Steady Aim off. As you can see, the sniper rifle moves around a lot. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn Steady Aim back on and then right away you can see it's a huge difference. As soon as you zoom in, your weapon is essentially stuck right on the target. This next mode has been requested by a lot of my clients because they wanted to be able to flip the orientation of their rapid fire modes. So what this does is it flips all of your rapid fire modes to work with L1 and R1 instead of L2 and R2. To be able to flip the orientation of it, we actually have to go into an advanced programming mode on the controller. To do that, we have to hold all of the face buttons down at the same exact time until you see the LED microphone turn a bunch of different colors. So as you'll see here, I'm going to be holding down the X square triangle and circle button all at the same time for around 10 seconds. Once you hold down all of these buttons for 10 seconds, you'll notice that the LED microphone light is going to flash a bluish purple color. Once you see that, we are now in advanced programming mode. Next, to get into flipped rapid fire mode, we have to tap the R1 button. Once you tap the R1 button, you'll notice that the LED microphone is going to flash two times. If it flashes two times, you are now in R1 rapid fire mode. If it flashes one time, you are in R2 rapid fire mode. So as you'll see here, it flashed twice the first time, and then I hit it again and it flashed once. For demonstrations of this video, I'm going to hit it again so that it goes back into rapid fire mode too, so that it goes into flipped orientation mode. So I'm going to hit it again so 
so that it goes into mode 2, which is going to be flipped orientation mode so that R1 will now be rapid fire. Now to save this configuration, tap the up arrow, and you will notice that the microphone LED will flash bluish purple again. That means your mode is now saved, and R1 is now going to be used as rapid fire. Now after you set this mode, you just want to double check and make sure you go into your settings of your game, and then make sure you turn it on to flip orientation mode. So as you'll see here, it says default, and then when I turn it on, it's going to go to flipped. Now that it's flipped, as you'll notice, R1 is going to fire. And then when I turn on rapid fire, R1 is now being used as rapid fire. So there you have it. These are all of the most popular modes that my controllers have to offer. If you have any questions about any of the modes, please comment down below and I'll be more than happy to try to answer them for you. Now moving on to that surprise that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be giving away one of my reactive LED PS5 controllers. So I actually got a lot of good feedback on that last video with the lightning LEDs. So I went ahead and built another one for you guys just so I could give it away. So just to let you know, this is kind of an early announcement of the giveaway because the official giveaway video is going to be out in a couple of weeks. So I just want you guys to be on the lookout for when the video pops up because all you want to do to enter into that giveaway is simply comment on the video and like it. And with that said, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, feel free to ask any questions down below and I will try to answer as many as I can.